Kia ora, fi mai tēnā tātou. Um, no mai haere mai ki tēnei wā, ki tēnei session. Um, ko waio hea di tēnei uh, no Ngāte Kahununu uh, me Tainui, ko au i tētahi kaimahi uh, mō Akoa Aotearoa, uh, te Whate Māori, te Mana Akonga, and anything else that gets added on. Anyway, we're here for our panel session for the Tauira. The kaupapa for today is how can institutions manaki Tauira Māori specifically. Um, so we have um, our panel in, in front of us today. I'll just get them to wave from there and then we'll introduce them because we're actually going to do our speaking order slightly differently than what is proposed on the programme. So we have Jade. Hi, and Stephen. Thank you so much for um, coming in. And of course we have Jerry Daniels, who is currently the Tumwaki of Ngāta Wira Māori, who are based in Auckland, and Genevieve Wilson, current, the current Tumwaki of Tamanakonga and outgoing president of uh, Ngāta Wira at Victoria University. All right. So kia ora whanau. So that is the kaupapa for today. So I will introduce our first speaker, who is Jerry Daniels. We, sorry, new to tech. Tihai mai riora tu tu tamu e te maunga a ko kai hu te awa a kai hu te roto kai para te moana mahu hu ki te rangi te waka a kai hu te marae tamate ua ua te fare te waiari ki te hapu ngati fatu te iwi a nei ko Jerry Ahere Daniels tuake mo i te aroaro o kutai waku ankara a ku fire. Uh, Matua keke, fire keke, uh, kuta katoa te rea ngā pakeke, uh, e hapai ana i a tātou a ngā kaupoi uh, kei te makarauna uh, i ngā whare wānanga hurinoa te motu. <coughs> uh, no, little bit about myself. I was born and bred in Southside, went to school just down the road at ngā tapuoi. Uh, I went to Kohanga, went to Kura, and now at uni, I'm still mucking around. Kia ora. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, Yes, yeah, so Kopa before the Ra, you heard it. Uh, I, I think what I'm going to sort of call it all about is the Fakatoki that we, I learnt at school. And that Fakatoki was uh, uh, Mate Fano, uh, Mate Hapu, uh, Mate Iwi, uh, Te Tamaiti, uh, E Hakatipu. Uh, so why I say that is, is because uh, at the university, you know, I went to Kura, uh, everybody's basically Fano at a Kura. Then you go to uni, scary, you don't know anybody. Um, and so the first issue that I want to suggest is that uh, there has to be a, a conscious effort uh, to identify Māori at the university uh, and not to so much uh, cuddle them in Māori cult... Mo what's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at, at the university. Um, I wrote notes. Uh, but yeah, so... Tēnei uh, mea te tangata. I've sat in the, in, in the hui for the past couple of days. I've listened to all these awesome kaupapa, uh, but in the back of my mind, I've been thinking to myself, uh, no good you fellas knowing it if us tawira who it's supposed to affect have no relationship with all the different entities, let alone know who or what you're uh, about and what you're doing, uh, which is why I say um, uh, there has to be a conscious effort uh, by all of us uh, to meet our tawira ho. Uh, and to help them throughout their journey at the university. Um, sad stories at the uni, a lot of uh, some of my mates that I started with, uh, they didn't sort of involve or associate with the same rope that I did, Ngā Tawira Māori, uh, who I'm lucky enough to be, well, some would say lucky, some would probably not say lucky, um, but co-president of the Māori Student Association at the Auckland University. Um, and I put it down to that relationship with those Tangata, those people that helped me through, uh, survive my first year. Uh, and now, fourth year, um, one of three year degree and a year to go. You do the math. <laughs> 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 See, I told you, makarauna, no? No. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I honestly believe that you can have all the flash strategies in the world and you can have all the best intentions, but unless you know that Toyota on a face value, you know, you know them like, you call them your cousin bro or something like that. I personally think there's not really any uh, point in it, because it's supposed to help us, no good helping us if we don't know what it's about. 
Um, I got a happy story though. See, uh, so uh, luckily enough, and this is a plug for the Auckland University Business School, she studied there, it's the home. Um, but uh, Ngātauri Māori has been fortunate enough to have a, a established a really, really strong uh, relationship with our business school uh, through the likes of one of our uh, old members, Sammy, up the back there, um, as well as uh, other members from the business school have not only been really, really pro Māori, uh, but have just been willing to actually come and have a coffee with us and say, bro, what are you up to? You know, do you need a hand with anything? How can we help you? Just that little effort to come and see us, not send an email or send a Facebook, bro, I'd love to meet with you, righty, righty, right. They actually literally came up to our association. They knocked on the door, they said, kia ora, we're these people, we're here to help you, how can I help you? And that, I think, uh, with anything you want to do, uh, it all starts there. Uh, you've got to make that relationship with everybody. Maori, you know, we're social people. Uh, if I don't know you, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to be honest. If I don't know you, I'm not going to listen to you. And it just goes, and out the other end. But if I know you, uh, and I, we get along, even if we don't get along, if I know what you're about, I can guarantee you that I'm about 95% more to listen to you if I know who you are. And I understand, you know, your whole, whole kaupapa. So this uh, thing around people, uh, relationships, uh, you know, it takes uh, a crew of people uh, to get you through university. Well, it takes a crew of people to get you through life, I think. Um, but uh, more so at the university, it's a scary place. Um, and you need that support, whether it be through the associations, whether it be through all, all your awesome mahi. Because um, I'm sitting here, I'm going, man, I'd love to, you know, how, how could that help my association? How could that help all my mates, all my bros? Um, and it all, always comes back to, well, we need to meet you first. Um, once, you know, once you've got that relationship established, the next challenge is continuing the relationship. Um, but yeah, I, I think really it all comes down to relationships uh, and meeting people. Um, you know, we love kai, uh, we love to have a gas bag. Um, so, you know, we may as well utilise those two things um, to meet our tawira and to learn uh, and to involve them in all the awesome strategies uh, that the rope are coming because I can guarantee you, you know, some of the people that come through, honestly, you know, I don't know why I'm the president and they're not sometimes, they're just so switched on and a lot of their whakaaro is just neck level. You know, you've got like Tarita coming through and the engineering, you know, Pop Kepa over there, um, the engineering school, some of their, just the way they think and everything. You know, if we had them in the positions where we need Māori to be to enact change, um, you know, uh, Te uh, te karo o te ngaru of change, you know, the wave of change. Ui. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, people, uh, relationships, um, and I've run out of ideas. Uh, but uh, final plug uh, if you really want to help Māori at, at the university, free kai uh, to bring everybody together. Free booze will definitely get everybody there. And then mind being PC, at the end of the day, if you want to meet people, you've got to do things that will make them want to come. You know, being PC, everyone just goes, ah, oh, nah, never mind that. You know, there's enough of blimmin' who is going on at the university. I can't even do my readings at uni, let alone come to your hui. So why would I want to do that? You provide kai, you provide uh, drinks. It's, you know, sort of politically incorrect. And it actually, I'm not even lying, it actually works. It's how the business school's Māori role, I reckon has improved, there's a lot more Māori at the business school now. Not because of the drinks, but because of the people that you meet. It's all those relationships. Eh? Networking. Kia ora business. Nah. Um, but yeah, so free kai, uh, free drinks. <laughs> Sammy, ngāraumata if you fellas are listening. Free kai, free drinks, um, free accommodation, um, and no student debt. Kia ora. <laughs> He did say makarona. <laughs> Kia ora, Daniel. Kia ora, Jerry, thank you. Um, our next speaker is Genevieve Wilson. Uh, tēnā tātou, uh, ko Genevieve tōku ingoa, he uri tēnei nō Ngāti Porau. Um, e noho ana uh, ki Pūneke, um, or for the time being. Um, so I've just recently completed my degree at Victoria, so a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Commerce. Um, thank you. Um, and are looking at moving to the University of Waikato to study te reo under te tohu paitahi. Um, so that's just a little bit about my um, study history. Well, 
if we go backwards, um, so I started in Kohanga and then went into mainstream schooling. Um, and I suppose coming from a mainstream background um, and then moving into a Māori space again um, at university um, really brought a different perspective for me and for those that I was engaging with um, to the table. So I had to admit sometimes some of my whakaaro were a little bit Pākehā because I'd been in um, a mainstream institution for so long. Um, so one thing um, we have to see with our tawira is that they're coming from a range of backgrounds and so we're all at different places in our interaction with te ao Māori and with how we understand how our mainstream institutions work. Um, so one of the first things that I wanted to talk about is always giving your tawira the space to talk about things. So it's often easier to open a Māori door but sometimes those conversations need to happen at a different level. Um, so I have to say, with my experience from uh, Ngai Tawira, the Māori Student Association at Victoria, um, the amount of doors that have opened because we've knocked have been um, phenomenal. So this includes, um, so now we have regular visits with the Vice-Chancellor in the same capacity as our mainstream association. And that was all because, um, you know, in an informal setting, you run up to the vice chancellor and try and get your five cents in, try and plug plug the association, um, and it all comes down to the types of questions that they ask and how we answer them. So he said, "What do Māori students need?" And I said, "We need to talk to you, and we need to talk to you as often as we can." And um, he said, "Well, let's make it happen." Um, so for, for the last two years, we've been meeting with him, and in that space, we've been. Um, given a little bit of safety to have some of those really hard discussions um, with our university. Um, and I know that Victoria is, is lucky in that aspect, um, and not all of our institutions are blessed with um, having those opportunities and having access to the people who, who can instigate and carry out a lot of the changes. So for, for Māori staff, if you can assist Tawira in getting to the right people to push messages across, is um, is always a really great thing. Um, and that includes um, panels. So the amount of opportunities that um, that are there for students to sit on committees, panels, boards within the institution so that they've got that voice at that table and they're in an environment that wants, wants to hear what they've got to say. They're not just the vote, they're not just the seat. Um, and of course that's easier said than done because Tawira come into those spaces sometimes a little bit shy. Um, you're sitting there with professors and doctors of everything and you know, if you're an undergraduate student that's quite intimidating. So I think, um, touching on what Jerry said, this relationship thing is, is a really, really integral part of um, getting student voice heard. Um, and having it put out there, because um, a lot of the time we're all scared of being shut down. Um, and then of course you've got your ones on the other end of the spectrum who don't care if they get shut down, they're going to keep going. Um, uh, another thing is the role of um, marae on universities. So I can't stress the importance of having um, that cultural space and that um, kaingarua on your university um, campus. Because um, sometimes we do need time out and that is the best place for us to go and recharge our wairua, um, talk, talk a lot of our um, take and our raru out. Um, so if your university doesn't have a marae, um, you need to make sure that there is that space that is culturally safe for, for our tawira, especially if they're coming from, um, I suppose, more rural areas where, you know, the heart of the community is the marae. Um, and if you take that space away from Tawira, of course, they're going to face adversity, they're going to struggle. Um, in saying that, we are a resilient people, um, so the Tawira of today are very resilient. We um, try not to let the little things bring us down, um, and a lot of time, a lot of the time that is because we are supported by, by Māori staff, by Māori academics who want to see us succeed, because I I would say hopefully you see a little bit of yourselves in all of the tawira that are coming through your door, so you're personally invested in each Māori student that is in front of you. Um, I think another thing of vital importance is giving us the space to, to criticise our institutions. So if you are locked into an SLA or a contract or um, you know scared of biting the hand that feeds you, 
um, if you're funded through your university is remembering that we are universities are the critic and conscience of society and if you're not going to let your students do that or provide them with the space to do that then you know why are we all here um, and that came to the surface um, and last weekend just gone um, so we had Hui Kaiarahi which is where all the um, presidents of the national tertiary of all the tertiary institutions associations so I think there's 12 12 and we had 10 in attendance came together um, and you know there is a huge turnaround and attitude everyone's really positive um, and you know they want to criticize the university they just want to know how if they're not enabled to and um, think giving them the space to talk to each other is really good um, so I can see Ivy coming towards me um, so I think it is all about discussion, it is all about relationships, it is um, about having a safe place to be Māori and you know if, if you're a little bit disconnected that place to reconnect and, and you know learn, learn, more ma learn more Māori ways and how you can grow, grow, grow your wairua I guess um, while at the same time you know learning because we're all here for you know mātauranga and Māori development and you know etc etc. Uh, kia ora koutou. <laughs> Thank you. And we have um, Stephen Hickey from the Wananga. So, safe space, Fano, you know, again, for tea. Um, ko wai katoa te wi wai katoa te awa taupiri te maunga tai nei te waka um, huri no Ngāti koro ki mātou ko Ngāti whawhākia tu ake nei e mihi kauake e mihi maha na tēnei ki roto i te poho o um, te wālonga o te roa ki Māngere ki Manukau no reira tēnā ko tu huri no um, I'd like to start with um, well, I guess I'm going to touch on very quickly on my story so I'm currently in um, year one uh, I'm doing Bachelor of Education here um, I this time last year I was on the DPB teaching Mauraco for sandwiches um, <laughs> because you know I didn't actually know the value of what that what well I, I, I did but it wasn't um, there was there was nothing for me other than that there were no other options um, so I got to say like I'm not going to say how young I am but um, I had to have no I've had no formal education since I was 17 so I'm one of the uh, you know, I'm one of the ones that is sort of you look at it a little bit sceptically when you're coming in. Uh, the only reason I'm here is because of the Teach NZ scholarship. I would not have been able to afford to even be here um, without that. So um, the demographic that they're going for is the male Māori that speaks Māori. And as I see it now, if you want to have a look at the Vulnerable Children's Act as it's just been, uh, as it's come through recently, the odds of getting a male Māori over the age of 20 that has not had something to do with some criminal liability is super slim. So what I would ask is from a secondary level is, you know, where is the support and the scaffolding to actually guide our young men through this path into tertiary directly out of school before they can get into this other type of things, other type of trouble that will prevent them from ever becoming a teacher. Um, especially in the primary primary sector. Um, so for me, there was no other way that I would have been able to get here. It was pure luck that I don't have any police record. Um, <laughs> and I will say, I mean, when you're the guy with the dreadlocks and the no shoes and the ripped flare jeans walking down the road, the police, the first thing they're going to do, what are you up to, buddy? You know, and we all know this, uh, what is it, unconscious bias that they have. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing uh, for a lot of the rangatahi these days, it's even worse. It's even worse because they've seen their, their pakeke get messed around with and locked up unfairly, all these types of things. So I think, yeah, just that scaffolding throughout secondary, it could be good to look at. You know, if we want more male Māori in, 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 in here, I think we need to do something like that. Um, for me personally, being here, um, uh, jumping technological advances. When in my first year, I've seen like when I got myself a new laptop, it's pretty pumping. But a lot of my colleagues, a lot of my cohort, they don't have them. That I think, especially in education, it needs to be provided. All of the new, all of the stuff with one note, end note, it all needs to be hammered in first term. You've got to get all of that stuff together. Otherwise, we're not preparing us for when I graduate. Am I redundant already? When I walk into this classroom in 2018. 
uh, what's happening there that I'm not being taught. So I think these need to be kept abreast the whole way. Uh, as things are advancing, it needs to come into us, into our mechanics classes, and we need to actually know them inside out. Most online, uh, most school classrooms online now are online now, like with Google Doc and stuff like that. And it's amazing because you can share lesson plans. There's no more, oh, this is my lesson plan. There's no more poo hi hi to do with it. It's like, well, uh, you know, if you need this, then here you can take it from your team. It's all on the cloud. You can just use it, and that's collaborative. And it's it's closer to I think becoming a more Maori sort of look at education. And so if we're doing it from that perspective. Um, uh, we, I believe, will be closer at bridging this gap, at finding the place where the ahurutanga is. Like this was saying, um, the ahurutanga, not only in our, how we're learning now, but how are we going to provide that for our students in the future? Because the examples that we have are, are all we have. And if we're not seeing it here, uh, which I'm fortunate to be at the Wanang, and I must say that we get hammered on ahurutanga, we get hammered on kaitiakitanga, it's, it's every single student. Um, uh, we're already doing kaupapa rangahau, kaupapa wānanga, things like this because uh, this, is our, this is our component that makes us stand out from the rest of the universities. I don't know, I haven't been to any other university. Um, I, I feel your pain when you don't have this sort of thing. Uh, the wānanga, we got our own problems, but at the same time, that's not one. We got 99, but that ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, I guess in, in closing, um, uh, yeah, just if, if I think our kayako need a, personally, I think our kayako need to be much more supported as um, I'd already brought up this morning, because if, if our kayako is stressed out, that, that's revealed, that, that comes through in the class. You know, if they're, if they're bumming out about something, they don't want to. You know, they try their best to hold it together, but you can see that they're not getting the support. And so this comes also into the transparency, because if we're not seeing things, there's some things obviously we shouldn't see, but if we're not seeing it, they're not seeing it, it's not transparent to us. We don't know who to talk to, how do we assist our kayako? Well, um, that's not really our role, but we actually bring in flowers and stuff sometimes because we feel like that, because that's how we roll. But um, seriously, for you guys, it has to be something more substantial. Okay, so uh, thank you for listening to my quarter today, and uh, thanks for letting me be a part of this awesome <laughs>
The other thing is, if we're going to deliver programs targeting young people, the system has failed. We need to be willing to invest in good pastoral support services for them. So we can't expect young people to achieve when they're dealing with the grind of daily life, when poverty, we know, is a real issue right now for our whānau, housing, our whānau don't have places to live. We're in, we're in um, Auckland now, we know the issues that, that stem um, from the communities right now. So we need to be willing to invest in supporting them to get through those hardships and to give them the tools um, to take forward into their future. So that is the essence of my corridor. I don't have much more to say, I didn't have any notes in front of me, but really to challenge you all and ask yourselves, how can I give Rangatahi an opportunity to influence what we do as an organisation and how can we support them better at the coalface? Kia ora. Thank you, thank you Jade, thank you to our panel. Um, we have time for two questions. Kia ora. I just want to ask the panel, um, it didn't come up, but how important are the expectations of your lecturers and your institution around your expected performance? So, how does that influence um, commitment to studies and, and things like that? Does that actually come up as an issue? Is the expectations of that institution that you're attending? Uh, ah, just talking. Okay. <coughs> um, to answer your question, Mato, I think being a Māori student at uni, you do, you you're, you can't just pass. You have to like pass with flying colours and with a jet on the back of your back with all sorts. You know, you've got to because if you just pass as a Māori at the university, oh yeah, you know, you just pass. You know, you probably just. You know, and then you're going to go teach automatically or whatever you're doing, and you're just going to be that sort of like mediocre thing. And then when you pass as an A, it's like, oh, you know, they don't you recognise differently. It's like uh, they'll you they'll use either a Maori when you're sort of mediocre, and then you're a Kiwi when you pass well. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that goes back to that. Um, um, that caught it before around racism and that unconscious bias. As I, and I think that's not only with us students, but it's also with all you kayako as well, because uh, some of the hui that I've had to sit in, it, it's sad to see that it's not just us tawira who are experiencing this in the tertiary sector, but it's also a lot of the kayako. They have to, you know, work, I, I think, sometimes <laughs> twice, triple, maybe quadruple times as harder than any other teacher just because they're Māori, just to prove that you know, we, we Māori are successful people. And it, I, I think, you know, it sort of sucks. Yeah. Can I talk to that too? Is it, uh, or, uh, um, I think my, the expectations, like for me, I have expectations on myself, and I guess the co who I see in my class who most excel or who most turn up, it's an expectation on themselves. I do want to be as successful as the Wānanga. Uh, I did, someone attempted to poach me last term they said they could turn my papers into theirs and whatever and, and I th thought no because it's an established university on Māori and this is our way so if I'm going to just go down that river to me personally it just felt like no I want to be a successful the Wānanga. Currently like I said before for me I haven't been to any study since I'm 17 so this year I haven't missed one single day of school and that shows because I've got an A average. So, and, and I've done nothing else. It's straight into tertiary, or what the hell is this? Um, a week later, um, I'm, I know how to APA reference, and I was away. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, the expectation I, I, that I have of myself for the Wānanga is an expectation to me to be community Māori, so that we're building into each other. Um, but um, to be honest, there aren't too many expectations that, institute, that the Institute's saying to us, you must do this and this and this. It's, it's basically, well, you put it in on time, you do it well, and you'll be OK. Otherwise, do you know what I mean? So I guess from my point of view, it doesn't. There's not a lot of pressure, but um, for me personally, it, it is my life. It's for my child, children, it's for my my daughter, uh, for my family. I'll be the first one to have a degree in my family. So uh, it's a personal goal as much as uh, it is encouraged and it is nice to be here. Uh, but to come every single day, I'm the only one. I'm pretty sure this year who has done that with my class. And so um, yeah, the expectation I put on myself is greater. 
to answer your, if that answers your question, then, then the expectation that's from the institution. I think just to add to that, um, it's where relationships again come into play. So if you have um, a lecturer or a tutor that is genuinely interested in what, what you've got to say and what you want to do in this course, then you're going to buy into it some more. So it is, I want to make my lecturer, my tutor, um, mm. my teacher proud. Um, so you put that effort in and you know that they put effort into the course as well, you know, through their content and you know, you want to take the opportunity to take all the matauranga and learn from them. Um, so is this mutual buy-in, I think, so I've got to meet in the middle somewhere.